This podcast is part of the Shareable Podcast Network. Learn more at shareable.fm. Not every guest takes me up on the opportunity, but I like to do a segment called The Mic Swap, where I make my guest into the host, and then I become the guest. I let them take the conversation wherever they want to take it, ask me whatever they want, and uh, it's a lot of fun, I think. This is Mic Swap. Hey, everybody, this is Tony Chapman, host of the most fantastic podcast, not only on the planet, but not only in the universe, but in the multiverse, the shareable podcast. And here today we have the one and only Jeff Gibbard. So let's let's get into this thing. Let's rock and roll. So talk to me about the superhero work that you're doing. I want to understand it. Okay, cool. So uh, the superhero work that I'm doing is um, constantly evolving, but the the basic underlying premise is I think the world would be better with more superheroes in it. So part of the work is defining what does it mean to be a superhero? What are all the things that that includes? And then devising a curriculum so that I can help to uh, create other people who would then spread that curriculum further. And the idea is for people to bring the, the ideas and the posture of heroism into their workplaces, into their uh, work, you know, in, in the public spaces, in the commons, in the state, in the home. The idea is like to consistently try to be a superhero in all aspects of life. And uh, that's basically what it is. Okay, cool. So for us simple people out there, because, you know, some of us are real simple, how does someone know, or maybe first, can anyone be a superhero? So it's funny, I, I classify myself as a superhero, but the irony is I actually don't believe there's any such thing as a superhero. I, because ultimately uh, that implies that it is a destination. It's a title that you've been given. It's a thing that you've earned. And I think that the process of being a hero, of doing heroic things is just that. It's a process, it's a practice. It's something that you're gonna continually do. If you were to go on the timeline of my life and just randomly pluck out a Jeff, there are times where I was definitely not heroic. There are times where I definitely, I don't know if I would call myself a villain, but I certainly wasn't being heroic. I certainly wasn't always being the best person. Uh, and then there are other times where you can clearly see that I'm, I'm uh, being exemplary of someone who's attempting to be heroic and make a difference and watch out for people. So um, yeah, I don't think you can actually ever achieve superhero status. So it's kind of ironic. I use it ironically, but I do believe that there's a process for doing things that are heroic. And a lot of it comes down to minimizing harm and protecting people. Um, and, and not in a paternalistic way, but in a, in a compassionate concern, care for other humans type of way. And I think that extends beyond humans into our environment as well. Okay. So when I think of superheroes, I think of superpowers, right? Yep. So are we talking about a situation where we have a Superman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, someone with superpowers? Or are we talking about a Bruce Wayne, an average person who can do heroic things? Like, does everyone have a superpower? Because I know that's kind of the, the buzzword, you know, I think it's replaced synergy now. So talk to me, is it a superpower thing? Or is it more of a, no, 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 just stand in the gap and do the right thing? So I believe that everyone has a superpower, right? Like everybody's good at a thing. And whether you're like, you know, Superman level powered in that, or you're just better than most people in that, like everybody's got a gift, something that they're good at. And I encourage people to utilize the gifts that they have and to encourage them to think about how they can go about learning other skills and other abilities and continually growing as a person. Because I think you know, my philosophy in life is we may only get one shot at this, right? Like we don't know. And if we only have this one shot at it, shouldn't we make ourselves as capable and as, and as, you know, powerful for lack of, I don't like the word powerful because it, it denotes a whole bunch of things that I want to get into. But, but the idea is you should, you should be growing yourself to be as capable to take on the challenges that are in front of us as a species as possible. So I encourage people to acknowledge the powers that they have, learn the learn the skills that it takes to, to gather new abilities and then to direct them towards making the world a better place. Okay. So for those superhero neophytes out there like me, how does one figure out what their superpower is? I think one, you can, um, the, I wrote a blog post a while back called, do you even have a head? And the, the premise of it was the idea that it's very difficult to recognize in oneself what we're good at or what our brand is or like how to talk about ourselves. And the issue is we're too close to it oftentimes. So one of the first places I would encourage people to turn is to talk to friends of theirs, talk to family members, talk to people who can reflect back to them. Hey, you're really good at 
this, or, you know, ever since you were a kid, you were always this, right? So look for those things that other people can acknowledge. You're good at this. That, that helps to give you some validation because we often have trouble acknowledging our own strengths. That's the first thing. Second thing is I think you have to look for things that bring you joy. I, I think it's very difficult to be really, really good at something if you don't enjoy it. Like some people have a, a talent, but like, and, and, and they don't really enjoy it all that much. Like maybe you're great at the violin or something like that. But I think at, deep down in somewhere, you like that you're good at it, right? So I think that when you find something that you really enjoy, you're more willing to continue through the ups and downs of getting even better at it. So I'd say those are the first two things is look for what other people might tell you you're good at. Look for something that makes you really, really happy. And I'd say if there was going to be a third thing, try to think about what you're trying to accomplish in this world and then look for the power that you would need to be to to make that impact whatever that is and then work on that power you may not have it as a superpower but simply by having uh, a reason for developing that power you'll have more of a reason to get better at whatever that is what are your superpowers um i think i create a space for people to feel heard um that's one thing I, I, somebody recently said to me, actually in the podcast that went out uh, this morning, day of recording this, uh, she said, I create a space to bring out the best in people because I look for things in other people to acknowledge and appreciate and validate about them. So I, I think that that's a superpower. I think I'm fairly persuasive and uh, I think I'm a very good strategist. Um, I'm very comfortable at public speaking. Like I have a lot of different skills. I can, you know, I learn things at a very, very high rate and then I'm able to distill the things that I've learned, the complex topics into something simple. That, that's actually what I used to think was my number one superpower was distilling complex ideas into simple frameworks. Okay. I, I would, so now I'm going to start pushing back. I think there's a difference between skills and superpowers. Not Fair. that I'm in any way an expert at this, but I think one of your superpowers, because you said you find out your superpowers by getting feedback from other people. So I am an other people. Okay. So here we go. I think one of your superpowers that you may not have considered knowing you now is your ability to reinvent yourself and be resilient. Right. You've had to do that multiple times over your life. You, you know, whether people, I'm, I'm just going to get in your personal business. I don't know what they know about you, but you know, you, you, you tried marriage one time, didn't go the way you wanted it to. Right. A lot of people they're like, that's, that's it. It's a wrap. I'm not doing that again. You came out on the other side and did it better. Right. Business wise. I was with you when the business that you built turned on you, didn't go the way you wanted it to. Right. Look at you now. Right. And the problem is, and I'm saying this because you can't see the picture when you're in the frame. Right. Yep. So what you think sometimes are your superpowers. It's like this. It's as long as Superman's on Krypton, he doesn't think he's special because he's around a bunch of people who are like him. It's when he when he gets around people who are different. You know, when Wonder Woman gets around, when Diana gets around people who are different, when, when you're like, oh, wait a second. Not everyone does this. Not everyone does that. And I think that's part of what allows you to inspire others. And because you have gone through moments where you felt unsafe, you're now aware and able to create a space that is safe for those who are looking for it. And I think that's, so they're connected, but I don't want you to miss out on that part of it because I think that's really important that, you know, you understand that's not everyone, right? And people are going to be inspired by it, but they're only going to be inspired by it if they know the journey. Because if they don't know what you've done, then they can't see your resilience. And that's what people will connect with. They'll go, man, Jeff, I'm going through this, 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 or this. And then you'll share with like, oh, God, I didn't know you came out on the other side of that. People need to understand that because, you know, you can be Wolverine or you could be Professor X. And I think what you can do is you can be Professor X where you're now helping other superheroes to be that, but you're doing so by using all of your powers. And one of them is the power of resilience because most people, here's the thing, to find your superpower to find what you're good at, first you got to find what you're bad at. Yeah. And people don't often bounce back from learning what they're bad at. And so I think that's really important for you 
to consider doing because what you're doing is important. And I know it's not about just skills. It's really, you've connected it with having these skills and then linking it to being better, to taking a stance, to, to protecting other people and to making a better world. And so, you know, you've got to keep that continuum intact and then you've got to replicate it for other people. We got a few more minutes here on this awesome podcast. Um, Wait, let me just say real quick. Thank no, 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 dude. Is this your podcast? Sorry. I'm sorry. Is this your podcast? <laughs> I, I, I thought I, my bad, my bad. I'm I, sorry. I'm looking at the, uh, the logo and it says the shareable podcast with Tony Chapman, but no, go ahead. I'll let, I will allow you to give feedback. Thank you. Thank you. I was just going to say thank you for that. Um, because that's a, um, it, it resonates with me like real hard. Uh, and then also the, the point about sharing the journey and the vulnerability. Uh, I know the vulnerability is my kryptonite. Um, that is the most difficult. And it's one of the superhero code. Uh, one of the 10 things on the superhero code is vulnerability, but it's the thing I struggle with the most. So even you acknowledging those things from my story, like my tendency is to be like, oh, it was no big deal. No big deal. No big, no, that was nothing. I just, it was no problem. I just got through that. It was a phase of my life. It was no big deal. And that ignores all of like the actual pain and trauma of a variety of those different things that happened. But I don't talk about that. I'm just like, oh no, I just, cause that's for me, like almost where the resilience happens is like, I go through and I suffer in my own ways and I come back out stronger, but I don't often share that part of the journey. So I just, I appreciate that. And it, it mirrors what some friends have told me what the Enneagram told me and what my therapist tells me. So I appreciate it. Well, so let's talk about it. Why is it hard? Why is vulnerability your kryptonite? Why is that hard? I think because in truth, the traumas that I have suffered in my life have required me to be uh, strong in the face of certain situations. And then it's caused me to build up sort of a hyper resilient or a, a, um, a hyper vigilance around being like watchful for threats and not letting my guard down and being strong at all times. Um, so I don't know if I've ever told you this, but um, I think I've mentioned it on the podcast before, but uh, on my last day of high school, my mom got into a tragic car accident and she suffered a traumatic brain injury. She was in the operating room for like nine hours, received like nine or 10 pints of blood. Like she made it through, but it was like my last day of high school. And I was like, is my mom going to die? She made it through the whole thing. She was in therapy, you know, uh, recovery and rehab for many, many months. And even after she came out and she had, you know, somewhat recovered, she was never the same traumatic brain injury. You know, it's, it's never the same. So that was like just such a pivotal moment in my life where it was like, I was on the happiest day of like, I just finished high school. I'm going on to the next phase of my life, about to go to college, all these things. And boom, watch out. You never know when something's going to happen. So I consistently have this posture of, um, you never know when like tragedy is going to strike. So I'm always like vigilant, hyper, uh, you know, and, and that built in me like a little bit of a, uh, a habit of presenting strong. Okay. Do you think that <laughs> I am not your therapist? I'm going to say that first. Cool. I Do already you think got that uh, some of that contributes to some of your survivor's guilt. Like the fact that even in a point like this, you know, you and I were talking before my podcast and um, you, we were we we're really both talking, but you were mostly talking about how, you know, Hey, you know, I'm doing, doing good. And really it's like, I'm doing good on paper, but I know so many people who aren't right. And we can be acutely aware of that. Do you think that contributes to it? Oh, and, sure. and do you think that that knowing that you're doing well when others aren't keeps you from sharing with them? Cause sometimes you can feel like, man, you know, if I talk about, if, if I'm honest about how good things are and I know stuff is really hard for you, how do I do that without it coming across as making me feel bad? How do I, how does that happen? So well, give me your thoughts on that. Yeah. All that's hundred percent true. Like I, I don't like to talk about things that are going well for me. I don't like to talk about things that are not going well for me. I like to focus on other people and trying to help them have a better and better life. Like it, it my default is like, if somebody asks me how I'm doing, I'm like, I'm great. Let's talk about you. Right. Like, so if things are going well, I feel like I don't want to boast if things are going well. Cause often, you know, a lot of things in my life are freaking awesome. And I know that for a lot of people, it's not, and I want it to be for them. Like, I don't want other people to not have, you know, the, like I'm married to the love of my life. Like I love that woman with every cell in my body. And She's I awesome. of, she is. And, and I know a lot of people that are in bad relationships or in their like lackluster relationships or whatever. So like, when I talk about that, I feel like, Ooh, I don't want to like rub this in. Like, I don't want to be that guy. Right. 
And then if I have something in my life that's challenging, I don't want to drag other people down with my problems. They're my problems. I'll go deal with them, right? So I'm not comfortable on either side of it. And it does stop me from, from sharing the full story of things. I kind of gloss over it and then try to just return my focus to where I'm comfortable, which is helping other people. Do you have at least some people that you can share your victories with and have your hurts with? And I'm saying that I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, but I'm also thinking to myself because, you know, I go through a lot of the same things, but if you don't have an outlet for those things, well, I'll get into what happens if you don't have an outlet for those things. But do you feel like you have people that you could still be on your household, be on Erica, you know, but, yeah. but people can go, oh man, you know, man, I just had this awesome victory. Like you and I both have a, a friend, Jennifer, who does flaunt at Fridays, right? And it's just a chance to, things are awesome because sometimes we feel like we can't say things are awesome. Or you can have people you can go to, we go, man, okay, things are horrible right now. And they're not going to necessarily try to fix it. And they're not going to judge you, but they're going to be there. Do you have that? So I would say that I, I'm making strides in at least one of these areas. But so, the, so on the sharing the hurt side of things, you know, deciding to start talking to a therapist like a year and a half ago or whatever it was, was like huge decision. Brilliant. Really glad I did it. So I'm, I'm starting there and I do have, you know, a couple close friends that I'm, I'm willing to share certain things that kind of suck. Um, on the sharing successes side, that's the more difficult one, actually. And I would say it's the more difficult one because, um, one, I'd have to acknowledge my own successes before I could acknowledge it to somebody else. But I was on a podcast once with uh, this guy, Johnny Nastery. He has a podcast called Hack the Entrepreneur, and he calls it the entrepreneurial gap. That whatever you accomplish, you immediately start looking at the next thing, right? My, I'm no different. Whenever I accomplish anything, I'm immediately thinking about what's next. How do I grow? How do I get better? How do I do this? How do I do that? How do I make more of an impact? Whatever it is, right? Um, nothing ever feels big enough to celebrate. And that's the problem that I'm trying to first struggle with and, and wrestle with and figure out because it's really tough to tell somebody else, hey, I'm really proud of this if you're not first already proud of it for yourself. The only thing I can think of in recent memory, aside from like gloating about my daughter, the only thing that I can think of is writing this book. That was the one where I was like, you know what? For this one, I'm proud as hell. That is a process and you know it. So that's the one where like, I feel like it's, it's the one where I'm a little bit like, you know, willing to, willing to shake my tail feathers a bit. Yeah, I can relate to that. And we have to learn how to celebrate our victories. So it's interesting when I, I said, when I finished my book, I was going to buy myself a really nice watch, right? Didn't do it. Okay, but okay, I got this TEDx talk. When I do that, I'm going to buy this really next watch, nice watch. Nope, I still have not bought that watch. And I've had great victories, but I'm so busy moving to the next thing. And so here's the danger. A, you don't get to celebrate, but B, and here's the, okay, so here's the challenge, right? Back to the superhero idea. At some point, people can't only see your alter ego. They have to see the actual superhero. And I believe that there's a lot of times, you know, if you see Superman every day, that's too much, right? It's like being with Tigger, you know, but there have to be times where you reveal yourself for the good of the people. And it's a calculated decision. That's, I think, what I would love to see happen with you and with everyone, because you're not the only person that struggles with it. It's, you know, is it, is it narcissistic to talk about my victories? Is it selfish? Is it, you know, I don't need to, if someone's going, you know, having a tough time, I don't need to necessarily talk about it to them at that moment. But then also, is it, am I bringing other people down when I share my defeats? It's, or do I have to look tough or all of those things? That's part of our human journey, right? And we have to figure out how to master that because as you mentioned on your podcast, which, you know, I've listened to once or twice, but as you mentioned, you know, we think we only have one shot at this thing, right? We don't know. So that's what I would love for all of the listeners to look at. Hey, look, listeners, if you have a victory, celebrate. If it's challenging, acknowledge it, find people. When you overcome those, like well, it's been interesting for me with my children and my children now are 23 and 20, but the best lessons, the ones that they've retained are the ones where I first shared my defeat that they could relate to versus here's what you should do. 
So, yeah. So let me ask you this. I got two last questions for you. Unless I come up with another one, who knows? So two last questions. Question number one, what work, what effect, what impact on the world would you love to see your work have? Like what's the legacy of this thing? If, if I could think of any one thing right off the top, it would be a, a dramatic improvement in the quality of leaders in every facet of life. Um, I think leaders are, are probably the um, people who are in, and, and I guess the way I define leaders is not a title. It's not a role. It's a mindset. So I think people establishing and taking leadership in, in the areas of their life where they can express leadership and they do it in a way that is kind, that is generous and that is inspiring to people. Um, so the, the three kind of pillars of lovable leadership are care, trust, and safe travels. So you have to care about the people that you're leading that are in your care. You, you have to create environments of trust and you have to create destinations that you help people get to safely. So those are the three tens. And I want to see that in parenting. I want to see that in politics. I want to see that in companies. And if, if the lovable leader idea could, could be spread around, we could create more love in our environments. I think that trickles down into so many areas of life. And I think that it helps us to create a kinder, safer, better, more equitable society. Very cool. Not a question I was planning on asking, but what do you think the world is lacking right now? What, what, are the, what does the world need? Um, I mean, it, it's somewhat cliche to say it, but I think empathy is like a big, big missing piece. Um, and I think shared like common goals would be like a real big one. You know, like I, I think we... We do not have, as a species, a, a really keen awareness of the fact that, like, we're all together on this floating rock, that, like, we're floating through the galaxy together, the one home that we know of, the only home we have. Like, maybe it's time that we get done with this petty nonsense and we start working on some some real – but there's a couple people, handful of them by, by, like, global standards that win and win at the expense of all the people that lose. And uh, I don't know. I feel like we just need to fix that. We need to, to fix the imbalance so that we could all live happy on this, on this planet. That's awesome. Okay. One last question. Um, well, there's a intermediate question for this. So yeah. you have a new daughter. How old is she? She is about to be one year very soon. Depending on when this episode comes out, she may be one year already. And what's her name? Aubrey. So here's your last question. What superpower do you want Aubrey to have? Um, so, you know, there's, so there's a character in X-Men named Rogue and there was a NBC show called Heroes where there was a villain called Siler, but um, both of them have the ability to absorb and learn new superpowers. And what I want for her is to be limitless. I want her to have the skills and actually the whole superhuman framework is basically this. It's, it's a framework to become limitless. Um, I want her to have the ability to generate and learn all the skills that she needs to do anything that she sets her mind to. That's awesome. At first I was like, okay, that's a cop-out answer. It's almost like I'm going to wish for more wishes, but no, it's actually incredible. Uh, I love it. So how can people check you out, Jeff? Where do they find you? Uh, easiest place is uh, my name is Jeff Gibbard. That's G I B B A R D. If you go to jeffgibbard.com, uh, you can find everything of mine. All the projects I'm working at will be linked uh, on a little link on the side that says all projects. You can find my podcasts. You can find all my, my blog posts and all that stuff. Which you should totally read my blog because it's awesome. Awesome. Check out his blog. Check out his upcoming book. Once again, Tony Chapman on the most incredible podcast in the entire multiverse. Listen, if you're listening to it, the question is, why are you listening to this by yourself? I don't understand that. Don't you know that the name of this podcast is shareable? Wait, don't leave. If you've never listened to my fancy outro, do it just once for me, please. Okay, if you enjoy shareable and you find it valuable, there's a few ways that you can support the show. One, you can share it on social media, which I strongly encourage. I mean, it's literally the name of the show, shareable. Two, you can review it on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're an Overcast user, as many of my listeners are, make sure to click that star button on the episodes that you like. 
The third way that you can support the show is by blogging about it or discussing it on your own podcast or even by making a YouTube video where you talk about one of the episodes. And then the final way that you can support the show is by supporting it directly on Patreon. You can find the link in the show notes. Now, before I let you go, I want to tell you about one other thing. You see, Shareable is just one of many projects that I'm working on at any given time. I've got another podcast called Rogue. I do a live streaming show every week called The Heroic Council. I've got a blog where I release a blog post twice a week. And if you're looking to keep up with all sorts of different content that can help you grow and become a superhero in life, I want you to check out jeffgibber.me. That's where I list all of my current projects and projects that are coming up in the future, including my forthcoming book, The Lovable Leader. It would mean a lot to me if you could go and check out some of the other things I've worked on because I put just as much of my heart into those projects as I do into Shareable. Thank you so much for being a listener. Thank you for being a supporter. And I hope to see you here on the next episode of Shareable.